Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at how to customize security in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. In the last video, I showed you some of the core components of security, which includes a user and adding roles to that user, and a role can have duties and privileges underneath, and really those are, um, in short, groupings for menu items and provide access to those menu items within the system. Um, within this video, I will show you how you can customize those uh, security objects, that security structure using the security configuration tool. And we'll look at a few examples. So let's jump in and, and start with one. So if we switch and look at um, the users form within Dynamics 365, um, we can see that if I click on a record for my name, Peter Raymer, I have a role that says Retail Operations Manager. Let's pretend I'm not seeing all the forms that I would like to see, all the menu items that I'd like to see, and that there's one that I'd like to add to um, what I can see. Well, let's look at the customer reason codes form. Right now, um, I'm logged in as another user that can see all the different menu items. But if I look under accounts receivable setup, there is the customer reason codes menu item. Let's just pretend for a moment, whether it makes functional sense or not, um, let's pretend we want this menu item to be seen um, by my user. I really have a couple different options. I can browse to this form and I can figure out what security roles and duties and privileges are allowed to see this form. And the way I can do that is by clicking on the options button and then selecting security diagnostics. This is actually going to show me all the roles and duties and privileges um, that can see this form. So the first question I need to ask myself is, does my user need to just add one of these roles? And very often the answer is yes. We don't want to necessarily customize the existing security uh, structure. We just want to use it. So definitely ask yourself that question first. Maybe I can add one of these. Sometimes the answer might be no. If I were to add this role to a user, they'd be able to see too many other additional forms that I don't want them to have access to. So let's just pretend that we want to add just this form to our existing um, retail operations manager role. Well, as I look at this, I can either add one of these duties to my role or um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and add this privilege. This privilege is named maintain customer reason codes. I'm going to use the security configuration form to add um, that privilege to the retail operations manager. So let's take a look at this. In this video, we're looking at the security configurations form. In the next video, I'll show you how to do this in code using the application explorer. Okay, so if I go to the security in configuration form, which is found uh, either by searching on the top or going to system administration security, you can find that here. It's going to bring me a form that looks like this. Um, and at first this form can look a little intimidating, but if you play around with it for a few minutes, I think you'll find that it's really uh, pretty easy. We've got some tabs at the top. By default, um, I'm selecting this roles tab and it's going to show me all the roles in the system. So again, as a reminder, we want to add um, this privilege to uh, the retail operations manager role. So I can actually click on this column to um, help me with standardized grid filtering. So I'm going to type in retail operations and then click apply and that should filter and show the role I'm interested in modifying. Once I've selected this role, I get to see the description of it over on the right hand side and I also get to see references to what objects, what other security objects are a part of this role. So I'm going to go ahead and select duties 
And when I do that, um, the form's going to display all the duties in another grid on the right hand side. And so then from here, I can actually keep drilling in further. I can choose a duty that I would like to add. I'm going to find this one called maintain retail point of sale permissions. I'm just choosing this um, a little bit randomly. Um, in your case, you might have a specific duty that you want to add. I'm going to select that one. And when I do, each time these buttons will dynamically change based on which row I've selected. And in this case, I get another uh, grid to the right. And so here I can actually select privileges and the system's gonna kind of nudge itself to the right a little bit further and it's gonna show me all the privileges um, that are part of um, this duty. So what I can do now is I can actually um, add another privilege to this existing duty. So in this case, we looked at the security diagnostics and we saw that this form is part of the maintain customer reason codes privilege. And so over on this security configuration, I can click add references. Now, this is different than clicking create new. Create new will create a new privilege. In this case, we don't need a new privilege. We just want to add an existing privilege to this duty that I've selected at the privileges node. So I'll go ahead and click add references. And then it's going to give me a dialog where I can select which privilege I'd like to add. So again, um, using this drop down uh, is going to be my friend rather than scrolling through all of them. And then if I can either copy and paste this or type it out, I'll come over here, type this here, hit apply and it didn't quite find it. Um, and that's because I think I'm using the label here. Let's see, whereas I might need to be using um, the AOT object, but let's see here. So maintain, we want maintain customer reason codes. Customer. And I think it's because I actually already added this one already. So let's hit cancel. Right. It's actually already added here. I did this once before. So um, if you hadn't already added it, it would show up in that list. You click OK and then it's going to show up on this grid because I did this uh, right before. We're already seeing it listed here. All right. Now that we've added it here, um, another thing has changed. Under this unpublished objects tab, we can see any of our changes that have not been published. And I've been making several different changes, so you're going to see several things in here. Um, but I can see anything that I've changed in here and I can click publish all. Until I click publish all, um, these objects won't actually apply to the system. So I need to either select which ones, click publish selection or click publish all. Okay, so this covers an example where we have an existing role and an existing menu item and we'd like to add that menu item um, to um, that existing role. The second example that's very common that I want to show you is what happens if we have a new menu item. Maybe in, we've created a new form or batch job or report and we'd like to add that to um, an existing role. Re really, we do the same things. Um, we can select a role or a privilege. In this case, I'll go over to the privileges form or privileges tab and it will show me all the privileges that are in the system. And so I can find one um, such as the maintain uh, customer reason codes privilege. And then once I've selected this, I can select display menu items references, and it's gonna show me what menu items are under this privilege. Well, I can actually add additional menu items to this privilege or I could create a new privilege and add a menu item to it um, kind of any of the above so let's go and create a new privilege just for fun I'm gonna type tutorial vehicle 
two. And I'm doing two just because I've done this once before. But I'm going to create a new privilege to house my menu item um, for managing vehicles. So I've created a new privilege. It will then get added to our list of privileges. And then as of right now, there's no menu items that are under this privilege. So I'm going to select display menu items and I'm going to say add references. Remember add references is really for adding um, these different existing nodes as opposed to creating a new privilege. Okay, so from here I can again use this filter functionality by clicking the top column. I'm going to type in um, the beginning prefix of my different um, forms and I've got one called RSM vehicle. I'll go ahead and select this. This is the name of my menu item that I've created within the code. And then I can also come down to this bottom section and select the access level. So I want to grant, read, update, create, and delete access. Perhaps you want to create a couple different privileges. It's very common to have one privilege that has access to do all these things, read, update, create, and delete. And then you might have a second privilege that just has access to read, but not actually update or delete or create any content in here. So I'll go ahead and click OK. That's going to go ahead and add this display menu item um, to this new privilege. Well, right now I've got a privilege that has access to a menu item, but that privilege um, is not part of any role. Um, and so w any, there's no way to add this access to the user. So let me go back to my roles tab. And at this point, I can either select an existing role or create a brand new role entirely that's going to store my privilege. So let's go and create a brand new role. I'm going to click create new. And again, I'm going to call this tutorial vehicle or tutorial role vehicle just for something fun. Okay. Then I'm going to click OK. The system's going to go ahead and create this brand new role and select it. I can remember it and refine it if I need to. Um, but again, this role doesn't have any duties or privileges or anything so far underneath. So um, at this point, the normal structure is to add a duty and then underneath duties to add privileges. I'm going to um, shortcut that a little bit. I can just directly add a privilege to a role as well. So I'm going to select privileges. And then because we've already created a privilege in, in the last step, I can just click um, add references. So I'm going to say add references. It's going to show me all of the privileges that are in the system. So I'm going to filter on um, this begins with tutorial word to try to find my privilege and I can see my tutorial vehicle two privilege. I can select it. I want to make sure that this box is selected on the left hand side. I can select multiple if I'd like and then I'm going to click OK. That's going to add my privilege to this role. All right, fantastic. So we've kind of covered the two very common examples. One where we're working with existing menu items and adding them to existing roles and duties and privileges. And another where we've got um, a custom menu item, like a new menu item. And we would like to create um, privileges and roles and create a new structure. So at this point, I need to go to unpublish objects and click publish all. To, to actually make these changes effective. And then lastly, I really need to go back to my user and assign that role to that user. So if I click assign roles, um, we can see if this actually shows up here yet or if I need to publish first. Um, but if I search for tutorial, um, I don't find that one yet. So I think I need to publish first. And after I publish, I should be able to see that new role. Um, in here and then I can click OK and actually um, allow my user to see um, all the menu items that are in that role. All right. Um, lastly, uh, let's just talk about uh, the pros and cons of using this security configuration tool. The security configuration tool is really useful 
for functional users. It allows you to make changes to the security um, and really understand what your security needs to look like first. And then you can convey those um, those changes to a developer and they can make them in the application explorer which is really the preferred location for security changes but this is still a really useful um, tool for making quick changes um, the changes that you make are stored in the database and so they are only going to exist in the environment you're in if you'd like to move them to an environment, maybe you're using a test environment to test out some security changes. Um, to move them, you can actually go to the security configuration form, then click on this button data in um, the ribbon bar, and then click export. And when you click export, it's actually going to um, automatically download and create a XML file with your security changes. Then when you navigate to your new or destination D365 environment, you can come back to the security configuration form, click data and select import, and you'll get a pop-up where you can browse to that same XML file. That will then import those changes. So that's a nice way of um, getting the same security changes into a new environment. And that way you don't have to manually make the same changes um, in each environment. Okay, so that covers um, the security configuration form. Again, in the next video, I'll show you how to make these changes using the Application Explorer in Visual Studio, which is really the preferred um, final place for these security changes, um, but it's still really helpful that we have this tool uh, right now to experiment with. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.